The house dress is the fashion statement of 2020. The Girl Scouts upgrade their uniforms for the first time in 20 years and all the best fashion from the Venice Film Festival. Welcome to three articles on the subject of dress. Hi everyone, Jennifer here and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. In three articles on dress, I like to pull the most current articles on the subject of dressing well and fashion and discuss them here with you. Before we jump into the articles, today's video is sponsored by Ritual Vitamins. Even with a perfect diet, it could be hard to get the key nutrients we need on a daily basis. Ritual helps women fill the gaps in their diet. There's no fillers, colorants, or shady additives, so you know exactly what's going into your body. They have two easy to take capsules that provide nine nutrients to support a strong foundation for your health. One thing I really like about the vitamins is that it has a little peppermint tab, which helps keep the vitamins fresh and it has a minty feeling when you're taking them, so it's a very pleasant experience. These are not hard to swallow at all. It's only a dollar a day to have nine high quality nutrients your body needs delivered straight to your door every month, no strings attached and no extra charge. So they gave me a 10% off coupon for your first three months if you use my link and my code down below. Thank you so much to Ritual for sponsoring today's video. Let's jump into the articles. So the first article from NPR, Don't Sweat Pants It, The House Dress Is Here to Rescue 2020. This was sent to me by Heather Barrera, but it was also sent to me by dozens of other people. So <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not giving credit to everyone who sent this to me, but I think a lot of people heard this and immediately thought of me. So, <laughs> so let's discuss this article right now. It appeared in NPR. For Lynette Gabriel, it started with a dressed up Zoom brunch with girlfriends. She called in from her home in Oakland, California in a leopard print long sleeve gown from the back of her closet. Snacking on smoked salmon, potato hash, and sipping on a glass of rosé, Gabriel found her new house fashion. We actually now call ourselves the real housewives of quarantine in our house dresses, Gabriel says and chuckles. Billowing linen, cozy cotton, floating silk, the house dress is having a 2020 renaissance. Flowy tunics, chic kimonos and moomoos, and ankle length t-shirts are floating into more and more shopping carts, a sartorial coping mechanism for the modern pandemic age. Clothes and mood are intertwined, argues fashion psychologist Don Karen, author of Dress Your Best Life. And so the house dress is a perfect fit for this moment a small expression of control during the uncontrollable, a taste of free-flowing freedom in a time rife with restrictions, a sense of structure and style on the days that feel hazy and dull. I've actually gotten rid of some fancier dresses to make room for more house dresses because I would say I'm wearing a house dress at least three times a week, says Preeti Chalak, a data manager from Cincinnati. House dresses followed her around Instagram, worn by influencers, advertised by brands, soon leaving a trail of striking floral designs on her own feed. For decades, the house dress got a bad rap, a throwback to the time when women's sway was confined to housework. Its origin is said to trace to a Victorian gown that freed women of corsets, but clad them instead in a baggy matronly smock named after Mother Hubbard from old nursery rhymes. Remember, we discussed this in my previous house dress uh, discussion. Even as the house dress got more shapely and stylish, its focus was chicness during chores. Some in the 1940s and 50s even came with matching oven mitts. Then the house dress loosened up, made most famous by the flamboyant caftans of Helen Roper on the 70s sitcom Three's Company. I have to say linen, comfortable clothes, it's actually very contagious, it's addictive says Malgozia Archer, a Polish and British designer who sells lounge dresses through her Etsy shop, Gosh Yaga. Ghost is how her teenage daughters have dubbed her most popular item, a billowing cloud of white linen with pockets. Back before the pandemic, Archer had worried her airy fabrics wouldn't be in demand until the summer. Now even her daughters are sporting versions of the ghost dress. Across the world in Arizona, Jade Banner can relate. Her online store, Dwell and Slumber, known especially for its caftans, is having difficulty keeping up with demand. Most notably, Banner's designs have finally won over her most elusive customer, her mother. She would not wear my dresses, Banner says. She likes clothes to be more fitted, more tailored. She just didn't get it. But on Banner's recent visits to her parents, there was her mother, lounging in a spacious Dwell and Slumber special, converted into a house dress believer during the pandemic. My dad says she won't wear anything else. What have you done? Banner says with a laugh. I do finally feel victorious. Fashion psychologist Karen says an outfit can serve higher purpose if it helps you express your mood, lift your spirits, or save you in the need for extra decisions. 
In the hamster wheel of housebound life, with all the mask wearing and hand sanitizing and social distancing, maybe the house dress is a triple promise. It might comfort you if you're down, hold you up if you're content, and ease choice with a single look that can take you from a nap to a business call, to the backyard to a nice dinner. I put it on and had some work to do, and I sat outside on a screened in porch and just felt like finally some peace had rolled over me after many months of not being at peace. $30, she said, was a small price to pay for a little bit of happiness. So I love this article. I just, I love the shift that women are feeling where they are allowing themselves to wear dresses at home and tell themselves, you know what, it is okay to wear a dress. Um, we just had such a shift for so long where women's clothing became really masculine and um, a lot of women fell in the trap of just dressing like that every day, so much to the point where they don't feel comfortable in a dress. Not that they don't like it or they don't want to wear it, but they feel out of place. And I cannot tell you how many women have emailed me and told me this. They said, you know, I feel really uncomfortable. How do I wear a dress? How do I do this again? Uh, which is so funny because historically women have worn dresses. Now I love wearing dresses, obviously I love them. Funny enough, I'm not wearing a dress today, I'm actually in my jeans. But you know me, I'm always in my dresses. And I tell you what, when I'm around the house especially, I feel most comfortable in a dress. I just do. I pulled out that old um, Target dress that I had, the burgundy one from last year's fall wardrobe the other day. I don't think I'm gonna be including that into my fall 10 item wardrobe because it is a bit worn down. I wasn't sure if I was going to get rid of it, but I might keep it as a gardening dress or a dress to do heavy chores in or things like that. Anyway, I wore it and I just felt amazing. I just felt so free in it. And that is what a dress can do. If you think about it, if you're wearing tight, restrictive clothing, it's not that comfortable. Tight jeans or um, even tight dresses and things like that. You know, you do feel self-conscious. You feel like maybe you have to suck in your stomach or do something like that. But when you are in a free flowing dress, you really do feel free. I feel freedom when I wear a dress and I love it. So. I am really glad that these women are embracing how they feel, paying attention to that in a dress. I think it's a beautiful thing and I am glad that the house dress is having a renaissance. All right, let's discuss the Girl Scouts. So I have an article here from Yahoo Life called The Girl Scouts Are Getting a Modern Fashionable Upgrade with New Uniforms. So the Girl Scouts are getting a new look for the first time in nearly 20 years after the organization teamed up with design students of New York's Fashion Institute of Technology to create some updated designs for the next generation of leaders. The leadership organization announced the news on Tuesday, noting its past apparel collaborations with designers like Diane von Furstenberg. However, this latest collaboration is different because it invited young designers to reimagine the traditional uniform of Girl Scouts grades 6 to 12, which has been unchanged for some time. The current cadet senior ambassador vest and sash were last updated in the 90s, and we have heard from girls that they want updates. We also recognize the importance of giving girls updated options and keeping them in line with the updated Girl Scout program, which continues to evolve. So the article goes on, but if you're just looking at the updates here, here they are, and it is quite a change. I think the old uniform was very traditional. I don't know, I always think of Troop Beverly Hills. Do you remember that movie? <laughs> we don't do the Girl Scouts, but I, I actually did the Girl Scouts, I think for one year when I was uh, a little girl. But I like the upgrades, I think they look good. I'm someone who um, is, I take change hard. I don't like change. For example, this is totally unrelated, but whenever um, technology changes on the platforms that I use on Blogger or YouTube, it takes me a while <laughs> to get it. So I'm uh, uncomfortable with change sometimes, but I think that these outfits look really nice. They are very fresh and modern, and I could see my daughter's liking to wear some of these things. I could see why maybe they wouldn't want to wear some of the old-fashioned uniforms. But I think that the, the Girl Scout upgrades look really good and chic and modern, and I'm happy for them. So what do you think about the Girl Scout uniform upgrade? And were you in the Girl Scouts? Let us know down below. And finally, let's go over to Vogue now. We are going to look at all the best fashion from the 2020 Venice Film Festival. So we have quite a bit to look at here. 
And let's just get started. This year's Venice Film Festival kicked off this week and offers a welcome throwback. Sure, the annual tribute to the best in international cinema has been a tradition for the past eight decades, but 2020's lack of star-studded events and joyous celebration has elevated it to new prominence. As the first international fest since the coronavirus pandemic began, Venice reminds the world of the power of on-screen creativity and red carpet fantasy. We're going to have a look at not all of the uh, dresses they feature here, but let's have a look at the first 10 or so dresses that Vogue deems best dressed. Okay, so the funny thing is I actually don't know who most of these people are. Some of them I recognize, but this first person here, I thought this was Kristen Davis. Doesn't she look like Kristen Davis? But it's not. This is Stacey Martin and she's wearing Louis Vuitton, and I think she looks very lovely. That's a beautiful dress. Um, the hair is very casual for the dress. I don't know if it was windy, but I thought that that was Kristen Davis, so funny. Okay, now we have Tilda Swinton, and I always like her hair. Her hair's always very cool. Tilda Swinton is wearing uh, Chanel Haute Couture. So we have Tilda Swinton and Chanel Haute Couture, and uh, the dress is pretty cool. I like it a lot. Uh, I don't know what she's holding in her hand, if that's a handbag or just a flower sculpture or something like that. Um, I love her shoes. Check out her shoes here. Those are amazing. <laughs> they look quite high and painful, but if you're gonna wear shoes to Venice, I mean, you're gonna wear those shoes. That, those shoes are so excellent. I love them. It just says Chanel Haute Couture. Okay, now we have Kate Blanchett, and I love her hair, and this is a very beautiful look. I really like this top in combination with the pants. I think she looks very elegant. Um, and she is wearing Alexander McQueen. So uh, I don't know about those shoes. I never really like those platform shoes, but I think that she looks really good. And uh, I really like that, that blouse, that combination there. So Alexander McQueen, it looks great. Next we have Amira Cesar, and she is wearing low, and uh, I think she looks beautiful. I, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't get this dress and maybe put her on the worst dress list, but I like it. I think it's very interesting, very fashion forward. It's like medieval Guinevere in a bit of a way, but I like the color and I think she looks really nice. I'm noticing, I don't know if this is a hair trend, but I'm noticing the hair on a lot of the uh, red carpet looks, looks a bit, Day old. I don't know if that's intentional or if that is just, you know, what was going on there. Okay, who is this? This is Taylor Hill in Etro, and I'm not a fan of this look. It looks like she just woke up and uh, put her bathrobe on. That's that's what I think, but I don't know. Maybe, what do I know? Okay, uh, who is this? See, I don't know who anybody is anymore. This is Elodie in Atelier Versace. Um, so, uh, I think her hair and makeup look beautiful. I do like Versace's gowns and how structured they are. I think the slit is too high. I wouldn't be comfortable wearing that, but other than that, I think that the dress is pretty neat. Here we have Natasha Andrews in Dior, and this is a beautiful dress. I don't know if you can tell, but it is actually see-through because I can see her uh, leg line there. So it is a see-through dress, and you can see her undergarments, which might be a part of the dress. I'm not sure down below. Um, I think her hair and makeup look good. It's very Emily Dickinson, isn't it? But of course the dress is not, but I think that she looks very nice. Here we have Anna Foglietta in Armani, and this is a very feminine take on a masculine tux, and I think that she looks very beautiful. I like her red lip. I think she looks great. Here we have Lou Divine Sagnier in Miu Miu, and um, I think that the blouse or I, I like the color and the pattern and it doesn't look like she's going to premiere it looks like she's just walking around but the side what do they call that I guess they call it side boob there's no other way to say it that's a bit too much for me so if that was covered right there I think that that would look really good I like her shoes here we have Lottie Verbeek in Alberta Ferretti and wow she's a beautiful woman um, that's a gorgeous dress I love it I feel like this is my best dress here I love her hair I love her makeup her earrings and that dress is so regal with the cape absolutely gorgeous I don't know who anybody is I am so out of it but I think she looks great I like it here is Ludovine Sangier, the same woman from the previous one and she is wearing Celine and um, I don't know I this one's okay, it's very plain, and then the, I don't know how flattering that neckline is, uh, but her hair and makeup look really pretty. Here is Taylor Hill again in Etro, 
I think she was she the one in the in the bathrobe. Um, so I wish I could see the front of it, but it looks you know there's cutouts there. Uh, the fabric is very pretty. So, but I think it probably needs a bit more fabric on top. Here's Linda Caridi in Emporio Armani. And it's so interesting when people choose things. I think there's different um, events where more casual premieres, kind of like the Cannes Film Festival, more casual premieres, more elegant premieres. So this must be a more casual one. Um, I don't like the pattern very much, but there you go. And this is Tilda Swinton um, in just out in public. <laughs> Is it? I, I just can't get used to the masks. It's so crazy that it's just, you know, I don't know. When I see it, I just have a shock. But she's just, I like her hair color a lot. She's wearing some smoking slippers and she's in Hayter Ackerman. Um, I don't know. It's just a very casual look there. I like the dress of the woman behind her. <laughs> and let's end here with Kate Blanchett. I love Kate Blanchett. I feel like she always looks good. She's wearing Esteban Cortizar, so that's a designer that I am unfamiliar with, but she looks amazing. I love this. She looks gorgeous. This is very Catherine Hepburn, I feel. I love the necklace too and the cape, and I think that she looks really beautiful. So I know that it is a bit frivolous to talk about red carpet fashion, but I feel like in times like these, sometimes we need the distraction. So I will definitely be doing this um, if there are any red carpet events going forward. I would love to know which was your favorite look from the Venice Film Festival. Who was your best and worst dress? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video and thank you to Ritual for sponsoring. Don't forget to check out my link and code down below. You can get 10% off your first three months. Thank you so much everyone and have a wonderful day. I will see you next time. Goodbye.